Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Luke begins his nativity narrative with the annunciations of the angel Gabriel to Mary and Zacharias. It seems that Luke purposefully places these two stories next to each other to not only contrast Mary and Zacharias, but also to compare the two miraculous birth stories of John the Baptist and Jesus Christ. The first annunciation of Gabriel occurs in Jerusalem at the temple to Zacharias, a priest of the course of Abia. The courses of the priests were established during the reign of King David when there were too many priests to serve in the temple at one given time. Because of their large numbers, King David divided the priests into 24 courses, Abia being one of these courses. Each of these courses would serve for one week twice throughout the year meaning that Zacharias would only have the chance to actually serve in the temple for two weeks during each year. Temple assignments for the priests, ranging from performing sacrifices to lighting the menorah, were chosen by casting lots. The most honorable assignment was to burn the incense before the veil of the temple. This burning incense was offered every morning and evening in the holy place and represented the prayers of Israel ascending to heaven before the veil. This was the closest that Zacharias would ever come to worshiping in the Holy of Holies, and it appears to be an assignment that he had never previously received. As part of the ritual, Zacharias, while praying, was to burn a combination of incenses on the golden altar, including, interestingly enough, frankincense one of the gifts of the wise men. Outside, the people would be praying and waiting until Zacharias had finished, after which he would come to the door of the temple to pronounce a blessing upon them. Of course, Zacharias would never be able to pronounce this blessing because he had been cursed by the angel, adding to the awe and wonder of the people. The second annunciation of Gabriel occurs in the small village of Nazareth to an obscure young girl named Mary, who was probably around 12 or 13 at the time. The contrast between these two Annunciation stories is remarkable, and it seems that Luke hopes that we will notice the differences. One occurs to a notable and respected elderly man and temple priest, the other to an unknown young girl. One occurs in Jerusalem and at the temple, the most holy place in Israel, the other in an obscure village of Galilee, likely in a meager and simple home. Luke also contrasts the very words of the vision of Gabriel, perhaps to teach us of how we should respond to inspiration from God. Both Zacharias and Mary are visited by the angel Gabriel. Both are told to fear not and that they would be blessed with a child. Both Zacharias and Mary ask for a sign or for understanding. The angel then gives both of them a sign. In the case of Zacharias, he is made dumb and possibly even deaf, and Mary is given the sign that her relative Elizabeth, who has been without child, will conceive a son. It is interesting to note that while these two visions are very similar, there are also some striking differences that perhaps help teach us why Zacharias was cursed while Mary was blessed. One of the differences seems to be in one simple word. When responding to Gabriel, Zacharias asks, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. Yet Mary responds, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Zacharias is seeking for a sign to know if the angel is really speaking the truth, 
while Mary simply believes and only asks how this miracle will actually happen. One other difference is how Mary responds when she says with faith, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Mary not only believed without doubting, she immediately was willing to follow. It is remarkable to think of the consequences of these enunciations for both Zacharias and Mary. For Zacharias, having a son would be one of the greatest blessings he could receive. Yet for Mary, being unmarried and pregnant would likely mean that she would be tried before the local synagogue and be mocked and scorned for years, possibly her entire life. Yet Zacharias, a man, a priest, and a respected individual is the one who seeks a sign and wavers in believing, while Mary, a young girl, and really a nobody in society, simply believed and trusted that she would be blessed for following God. What remarkable faith and determination Mary had. No wonder the father of us all chose her to be the mother of the Son of God. We welcome you to St. Anne's St. Mary Parish this third Sunday of Lent, our first scrutiny. We gather here this evening at St. Mary Mattingly Settlement. Our opening hymn is number 443, I Heard the Voice of Jesus, 443 in our parish hymnal.
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we gather with Moses, and he's there in the presence of God on Mount Horeb, and the flaming, burning bush was not consumed, the very presence of God. May that wonderful Spirit of God well up within us and burn out all impurities and all sins, all bad habits, and all that keeps us apart from God. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We feast on the Word of God. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. Leading the flock across the desert, he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There, an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in fire flaming out of a bush. As he looked on, he was surprised to see that the bush, though on fire, was not consumed. So Moses decided, I must go over to look at this remarkable sight and see why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw him coming over to look at it more closely, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses. He answered, here I am. God said, come no nearer, remove the sandals from your feet for the place where you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your fathers, he continued, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. But the Lord said, I have witnessed the affliction of my people in Egypt and have heard their cry of complaint against their slave drivers, so I know well what they are suffering. Therefore, I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians and lead them out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Moses said to God, But when I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, if they ask me what is his name, what am I to tell them? God replied, I am who am. Then he added, this is what you shall tell the Israelites, I am sent me to you. God spoke further to Moses, thus shall you say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. Thus I am to be remembered through all generations. The word of the Lord.
make yours justice and the rights of all the oppressed. He has made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the children of Israel. The from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all of them were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from a spiritual rock that followed them and the rock was the Christ. Yet God was not pleased with most of them, for they were struck down in the desert. These things happened as examples for us so that we might not desire evil things as they did. Do not grumble as some of them did and suffered death by the destroyer. These things happened to them as an example, and they have been written down as a warning to us upon whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, whoever thinks he is standing secure should take care not to fall. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Some people told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with the blood of their sacrifices. Jesus said to them in reply, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they are greater sinners than all the other Galileans? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 people who were killed when the tower at Siloam fell on them, 
Do you think that they were more guilty than anyone else who lived in Jerusalem? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. And then he told them this parable. There was once a person who had a fig tree in his yard. And when he came in search of fruit on it but found none, he said to the gardeners, For three years now I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree, but have found none. So cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? He said to him in reply, Sir, leave it for this year also, and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it, and it may fare, bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Last evening, uh, as we gathered here uh, for Stations of the Cross and Holy Mass, uh, we told the story of Joseph and, of course, his brothers, one of the 12 tribes of Israel. Just an awesome story of reconciliation. Tonight, we tell the story of Moses and the burning bush, one of the most famous and the most provocative in all of scriptures. Can you imagine going up Mount Horeb, sometimes referred to as Mount Sinai, and there Moses saw this bush that was burning and it was not consumed uh, there is tremendous symbolism in that fire you know the ancient uh, civilizations talk about earth wind fire and water one of the basic elements fire was the birthday of the church as tongues of fire hovered over the disciples uh, at Pentecost this whole cathartic cleansing this purgation that happens with fire but it also in some of the saints especially the mystics, they talk about a fire that consumes, that purifies, that draws us closer uh, to our beloved, to Jesus Christ. And so this bush has a voice, and the voice uh, talks to Moses and says, this is holy ground, take off your sandals. You know, when we come into church, we come into a holy place, a sacred place. We make the sign of the cross, uh, on our foreheads with the holy water. We genuflect to the tabernacle. We see that there is a, a place here that is set apart with the sacraments. We can feel and experience uh, the grace uh, that flows, not only from each one of us, but from the Eucharist uh, that we share, the Word of God, which sets our hearts on fire. Remember the disciples on the road to Emmaus? Their hearts were burning within them. They did not recognize Jesus until the breaking of the bread. Well, this story of Moses uh, is a powerful one for so many reasons. Of course, Moses went up Mount Sinai, uh, Mount Horeb, to receive the Ten Commandments, you know, a sign of the covenant, a sign uh, that God was with the people. The people asked for them. Um, their lives were debauchery. They were uh, basically miserable. Uh, they were each person trying to uh, get their own selfishness. Uh, St. Augustine said that's the worst sin. We just think about ourselves. The commandments have a lot to do with uh, God, our relationship with God and our neighbor. Uh, and so that's where we are. You know, the greatest commandment of all is the Shema, the golden rule. And what is it? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. Well, this was the God that came uh, to Moses. And what did he say? Sometimes I think we have a misconception. The God of the Hebrew Scriptures, the Old Testament, was a vengeful God, a God of wrath. This God is very tender. He says, I've been listening to the cries of uh, my people. Uh, you know, they're forced to make bricks without straw. They're slaves. They're cruel. They're throwing the firstborn. Uh, of course, Moses was in the basket in the bulrushes. You know, him, his own story is powerful to listen to. Uh, and so all this subjugation. And he wants to deliver the people. He wants to set them free. And uh, so basically he's going to lead them uh, to the promised land. But you notice uh, they wander in the desert 
for 40 years. Uh, sometimes we wander around for 40 years just to be cleansed. The whole purpose is so that they can grow closer to God. Moses did not get to go into the promised land. Moses and Aaron. Uh, it was Joshua and Caleb. Uh, Moses didn't always listen uh, the way God wanted him to. What is the word listen? comes from the Latin words ob audire, uh, to listen to, obey, obedience. That's where we get that from, to listen, uh, to let God uh, be in our hearts. That's why God gave us two ears and one mouth. We should be listening to the word, uh, especially during this Lenten season. Uh, so many opportunities, stations and uh, mass and uh, holy hours and Eucharistic adoration and benediction, penance services. I've been going around to a lot of places. Um, tonight I'll be over for a couple hours, 100 high school students um, over at St. Peter and Paul. Monday I'll be at um, St. Rose, New Lex, 7 o'clock. You're welcome to come. Uh, there'll be about seven priests there. Uh, there'll be five priests Tuesday night over at Sacred Heart Coshocton. Uh, and so, uh, you know, you can journey if you want. It's kind of neat to do that. One of the things also, uh, the deacon and I and a few of you are going to journey to the cathedral uh, this week um, for Vespers on Thursday night. Uh, and we have a new bishop, uh, Bishop Robert Brennan. So we're excited. I have not met him yet. And then his formal consecration and installation. There'll be cardinals and archbishops and bishops, uh, folks. Uh, this is really a moment in history. It only happens like once every 15 years. And so it'll be broadcast live, EWTN, all over the whole world. Uh, so we'll have an opportunity to see that. Why is this important? I think that leadership is extraordinarily important. And today the church focuses on Moses. Moses is the lawgiver. Remember last weekend we had uh, the transfiguration and who appeared? Jesus, of course, was with Peter, James, and John, but it was Moses and Elijah, symbolizing the law and the prophets. Jesus is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. That is what is so awesome about this season. And, you know, we've uh, heard a lot about Jesus, and hopefully we don't know just about Jesus, but we know Jesus and that is extraordinarily important um, to be able to witness to that effect. We should all be missionary disciples. We should all be evangelists. What's that mean? It just means share the gospel. That's what we're called to do. And we do that one-on-one. -on -one. We can be doing it with our brother or sister, our father or mother, our children. We can do it with our fellow parishioners. We can do it in our workplace. We can do it in our community. Um, and these are the kind of things that I think uh, give us a tremendous amount of opportunities. The whole message uh, of the gospel is to ascend the mountain. You ever notice there's steps, and in especially these old churches, there's an altar that's a little higher, and then there's uh, a reredos, a Gothic reredos in our church, and that is a symbol of climbing the mountain. You know, you see uh, always a little candle lighted next to the tabernacle. You see candles all around. Well, it's a symbol of the burning bush. And what is in the center of all of this? It's the tabernacle, uh, the body and blood, the soul and divinity of Christ. That's why we genuflect. We genuflect to a king, to the Messiah, to the Son of God. That's why the altar is here. Uh, you know, the epiclesis, the calling down of the Holy Spirit to change our gifts of bread and wine into the body and blood, the soul and divinity of Christ. Uh, what a, a, an awesome, you know, none of us would think of not eating. We do a little abstaining and fasting during Lent, but we need to be nourished uh, for the journey. Just like Elijah was nourished uh, with a little hearth cake the angel gave him as he approached Mount Horeb. Mount Horeb is very symbolic, uh, and very often at the top of the mountain, you will see what they call a theophany, sometimes uh, like a, a, a glow, a halo, like a thunder and lightning, uh, a cloud that sometimes overshadows. And much like uh, the Israelites were led in the desert uh, with a pillar of cloud uh, by day and a 
pillar of fire, a, a flaming fire by night. We are led uh, through life in our pilgrimage by the sacraments, by the word, the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. You notice that the bells were ringing as you came into church and we started mass. Uh, that's the old Angelus. And the Angelus, uh, as you remember it, uh, the Irish especially would kneel down in the fields, the potato fields, and say, the angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, those in the main nave of the church don't get to see this, but uh, I got to see the intro to this Mass. It was nine minutes, and it was all about the Annunciation, the first joyful mystery. The angel Gabriel announced to Mary that she had found favor with God. That's the feast we celebrate March 25th. What comes nine months after that? December 25th, Christmas, the baby is born. And, of course, the baby grew in wisdom. And one of the things that I think is important as we are in this Lent, um, Lent is a time that Jesus went out into the desert. He fasted, he prayed, he was tempted, and Satan tried to get him to use his powers as God. And he said, be gone, Satan. Satan is alive and well in the world today. But Satan doesn't bring life. Satan brings death. And that's why in our prayer of the faithful, we're going to renounce Satan, renounce all his empty promises, all his false lures. And very shortly after we uh, profess our faith uh, in our creed and renouncing Satan, we're going to have our first scrutiny. And we're going to call Debbie McLaughlin up. There's several that are making this journey uh, to Easter uh, to receive the fullness of the sacraments. Uh, Kyle uh, Graham uh, last night uh, received confirmation uh, by uh, our bishop. And I understand, I think the new bishop was there too. Uh, uh, bishop Robert Brennan was a kind of a surprise guest at that moment. And so let us open our hearts to the tremendous grace the synergy, uh, this dynamic shift uh, of our emphasis away from ourselves and toward Almighty God. Let's all stand together. We'll make a hearty I do. Do you reject Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. We now invite Debbie to come forward and to kneel before the altar. And all of us, let's kneel in support of her as our deacon begins this first scrutiny. Let us pray for all of our candidates and our elect, several will be at Mass tomorrow, whom the Church has confidently chosen. May they successfully complete their long preparation and at the Paschal Feast find Christ in His sacraments. That they may ponder the Word of God in their hearts and savor it to more fully day by day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That they may humbly confess themselves to be sinners. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That they may sincerely reject everything in their lives that is displeasing and contrary to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit who searches every heart may help them to overcome their weaknesses through his power. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the same Holy Spirit may teach them to know things of God and how to please Him. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That their families may also put their hope in Christ and find peace and holiness in him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we ourselves in preparation for the Easter feast may seek a change of heart, give ourselves to prayer, and persevere in good works. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That throughout the whole world, whatever is weak may be strengthened, whatever is broken, restored, whatever is lost, found, whatever is found, redeemed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of power, you sent your Son to be our Savior. Grant that this, your candidate, and all of our candidates for the fullness of the sacraments, who like the woman of Samaria thirst for the living water, may turn to the Lord as they hear his word and acknowledge the sins and weaknesses that weigh them down. Protect them from vain reliance on self and defend them from the power of Satan. Free them from the spirit of deceit, so that admitting the wrong they have done, they may attain purity of heart and advance on the way to salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the fountain for which they thirst. You are the master whom they seek. In your presence, they dare not claim to be without sin, for you alone are the Holy One of God. They open their hearts to you in faith. They confess their faults and lay bare their hidden wounds. In your love, free them from their infirmities, heal their sickness, quench their thirst, and give them peace. In the power of your name, which we call upon in faith, stand by them now and heal them. Rule over that spirit of evil conquered by your rising from the dead. Show your elect and candidates the way of salvation in the Holy Spirit, that they may come to worship the Father in truth, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Let us stand now as we continue with our prayer of the faithful. Thank you. You did great. We want to present um, the Debbie with the Nicene Creed today. And also the Our Father, uh, very beautifully, uh, these are now entrusted to her uh, and all of our candidates uh, so that they might grow deeper in our faith. Um, lots went into both of these. Of course, the gift of Jesus to us teaches how to pray, but many were uh, persecuted and killed uh, for this very creed that we pray every week. Debbie, we present you with these. The burning bush is burst, bursting with fruit, the presence of God. Thus God commanded Moses, remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. On the other hand, the fig tree is full of foliage, it's barren. The fruitless of, fruitlessness of the fig tree depends on it receiving nutrients from the cultivated ground around us. St. Paul says, whoever thinks he is standing secure should take care not to fall. If we live with our roots in the holy and fertile ground of the church, God will make us secure and set us aflame with his life. We pray for Pope Francis, Bishop Frederick, our bishop designate Robert Brennan, all priests, deacons, Franciscan sisters, and consecrated religious as we ascend the mountain of God in our Gothic Rarados where the holy tabernacle contains the body of Christ and the altar, the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ we will receive at this holy mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray to Michael the archangel, defend us in battle and be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil as we abstain from not only meat, but our sins, compulsions, and addictions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Kyle David Graham, who completed his sacraments of initiation with Bishop Frederick Campbell last night at Christ the King Church, and Mackenzie Reed Bice, Debbie Lynn McLaughlin, Linda Polk, and Julie Renee Crosley, who will be received into our Catholic faith 
confirmed, and received their first Holy Communion at our Easter Vigil, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those serving in the United States military defending our freedoms, especially Nate Kaufman serving in the trenches of the highly volatile Afghanistan, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, especially Bernard and Wilma Fisher. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the safety of all the unborn in the womb, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we ask all this through Christ our Lord. The hymn during the preparation of gifts is hymn number 559, O God, You Search Me, 559. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her, and so ardently did he thirst for her faith that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we too give thanks to you and with the angels praise your mighty deeds as we proclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaho, Plenis Angeli Etera, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui benit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more, giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit 
as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope, Frederick our Bishop, our Bishop-designate Robert Brennan. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. It's Monday we celebrate the great solemnity, the Feast of the Annunciation, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints and with our deceased brothers and sisters whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing with you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us all for each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ Jesus shared among us keep me safe for eternal life. Christ. 
the blood of Christ. The body of Christ. is hymn number 250 beyond these days 250 
Jesus on the mountain peak stands alone in glory blazing. Let us, if we dare to speak, join the saints and angels praising. Praise Trembling at this feet we saw Moses and Elijah speaking All the prophets and the law Shall through them their joyful greeting Looking forward to this week, uh, Monday we'll celebrate uh, Holy Mass in our St. Francis Abbey Monastery Sanctuary at 7.30 a.m., so uh, we've moved that earlier and we had a nice turnout, so look forward if you can join us to do that. And then Monday evening, uh, our deacon David is going to host at St. Anne's uh, from 6.30 to 8.30, a Eucharistic uh, couple of hours. So just come, come for an hour or a half hour or two hours. Uh, just to be in the presence of the Lord and let your hearts burn within you. Remember, Moses, uh, when he got a little bit old, um, it took 70 elders and actually a couple others, Eldad and Medad, uh, to pour out the Spirit to continue uh, the wonderful work that he was uh, doing uh, in the kingdom. And then on uh, Tuesday morning, I'll be celebrating Holy Mass at 7.15 a.m. with our Franciscan sisters at Genesis Healthcare. Um, and then Wednesday evening, our deacon is going to um, have uh, Stations of the Cross at 6 o'clock at St. Anne. And then Thursday and Friday, uh, the deacon and I are going to be uh, up at uh, the cathedral uh, for evening vespers and the consecration installation of our new bishop. So if you come on Fridays and you've been having a good crowd, um, there won't be any formal stations. We'll just do it privately. So if you want to come and make it quietly or you want to lead it yourselves, but we will be up there. So uh, kind of think of that. And if you have a hankering to uh, make a pilgrimage, um, I'm actually going right after Mass to St. Peter and Paul to hear confessions of high school kids. But Monday night uh, at St. Rose, New Lex, 7 o'clock, I'll be there with uh, about seven priests. And then Tuesday night, uh, I will be over at Sacred Heart Coshocton uh, with about uh, five priests. So uh, you're welcome to make that journey if you want. Um, that's everything. Let's all stand. We got one more thing. Uh, one, other, one other announcement. On Thursday, there's going to be a contingency coming from our parish going down to pray in front of the abortion center for the end of abortion in Columbus. They're going to be leaving from St. Anne's Parish at 10 o'clock in the morning. 
go down and pray for an hour or so, and then I, I don't know what their plans are, have lunch and come back probably. But uh, it, it's very important. It's part of uh, 40 Days for Life, and we're going down on Thursday. So if you, if you would like to go down and pray for the end of abortion at the center where the abortion is, you know, be there at 10 o'clock in St. Anne's. Okay, let's all stand and pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. The closing hymn this evening is hymn number 253, Lord, who throughout these 40 days, 253.